creepy guy? That that guy? That guy. That guy. That guy. That guy. He has parasites. Like worms? Like worms. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, that's weird, huh? Buenos dias, mis amigos. Alright, so this morning I'm going to make a case for this being the final day, okay? This is going to be uh, based on the scripture and evidenced in the world. Alright, so the way I want to start this off is by going to Matthew 24, alright? Follow me, just follow me on this, whether you agree or don't agree, okay? Just follow me, because Jesus is asked specifically, what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? See, the disciples wanted to know, just like I want to know, I have to believe that you want to know too, don't you? When is the end of this world? kind of a big deal all right so it's interesting the very first thing that Jesus says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying that I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many see he's this is this is incredible because he's saying that a whole bunch of people that say they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ will deceive many. And then if you are paying attention and you're storing all this, you know, in your memory, in your brain, and then you get you get down through all this stuff and then you come to another verse here where it says, except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. All right. And notice again here it says, If any man say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Now, the, the proper way to understand this, verse 23, is that this is a warning against the Pope, okay? Whether you agree or not, let's just, in your mind, I want you to pay attention. I want you to follow me on this and consider it, all right? Just consider it. And <clears throat> I'm going to use, I'm going to go back to, uh, is it Jeremiah? I don't remember nothing. Ecclesiastes, <laughs> way off. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So I'm asking you to hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. So hear me out. Okay, back. Except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now consider verse 23. If any man say, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. That's talking about the Pope. Okay, I don't want to make a big deal out of this. I don't want to get sidetracked. I want to stay on point. But the Pope in Rome, by his own... Uh, title claims to be the representative of Christ on earth and he's not he's the Antichrist so here in verse 24 we see that for there shall arise false Christ speaking of the popes and false prophets speaking of false teachers and shall show signs great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, meaning those that really are saved. All right, so there's a whole bunch of people claiming to 
to believe in Jesus. Just like what we read here in verses 4 and 5. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, <clears throat> excuse me, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. And then verse 24, they shall deceive the very elect. They, being false teachers, and the popes. All right, and now consider verse 22. This is what I want you to really focus in on. Keep it in your memory. Keep it in your brain. Do not forget it except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those that are, are really are saved those days shall be shortened all right this is the whole basis for what i'm going to present for you okay so if we go to matthew 7 for example jesus says lord i'm sorry jesus says not everyone that saith, uh, yeah, I better, before I butcher it, let me get to it. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And the will of the Father is that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the will of God. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? That means taught from the Bible or taught the things of God all right teaching the things of God that's if you look at it and understand it that way it's not it's happening everywhere all right and I sometimes I think people lose sight of that fact of what the word prophesied means it just means teaching about God that's it that's all it means I look at it in a simple form and it's easy to understand many will say to unto me, unto me many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name in the name of jesus cast out devils which are bad spirits like uh you know for example drug addiction and and so on and so forth all right helping um uh, uh, married couples for example right dealing with uh you know uh infidelity and that sort of stuff and then in thy name done many wonderful works. You see this all the time. Whether it's, uh, you know, the various different churches, including, um, you know, Catholics and Mormons and, and so on and so forth, Jehovah Witnesses. Um, what do you call those guys that, uh, Freemasons? They're all doing many wonderful works, all of them. You can't, they're not doing bad things. They're doing good things for the communities. No question about it. And they're doing it in the name of Jesus. Consider this. Many will say to me in, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name, in the name of Jesus, done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. Now, why is Jesus saying that these wonderful things that these people are doing is iniquity? It, and the, the answer is obvious. It's obvious to those of us that are born of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God makes it plain and easy to see that these people up here are trusting in the things that they do as opposed to trusting what God does for us. See, Jesus has done it all for us. We're not saved by anything that we do. We are 100% at the mercy of God. And so you're going to take credit for what teaching in the name of Jesus? Well, I taught in the name of Jesus. I, I cast out devils in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, oh, I did many wonderful works. I helped the old lady across the street. In the name of Jesus, I did that. So I ought to, I'm a good person. I ought to be saved. I'm better than those people over there. Those people don't even, they wouldn't even walk the old lady across the street. I'm better than them. So I deserve to be saved. Is that how it works? No. 
No. No, 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 no. You don't understand nothing, if that's what you think. And that's the world that we're in. And so it really it brings me great concern to even present this video because anybody watching, do they understand? Any of you? You? If you're watching right now, do you understand what this means? It's, it's kind of a big deal. So anyways, this is evidence here that in the last days there will be very few people saved. You know, again, let's go over this. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. And if any man say, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. In equity. Excuse me. Let's go to Luke 18 real quick. We got some more, uh, more uh, verses that support this. If I'm in the right place, all right. So let's con let's uh, focus on uh, verse eight here, where it says, "I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth?" Question mark. I mean, that's a, that's a heck of a question right there. It really is. Shall he find... Think, imagine God saying, will he... When... Like, you know... Forgive me how I'm wording this, but when Jesus comes... Will he find faith on the earth? Will he find anybody that believes? Will he find anybody that's saved? All right, compare that with what we just read here in Matthew 24. Uh, except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. So, in other words, if God allows the days to continue as they are, there would come a point to where there's nobody saved. And, of course, here in Luke 18, 8, the question is being asked, shall we find faith on the earth? Will anybody believe? Now consider in the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, I, I estimate there was 25 billion people on the earth. There could have been a whole lot more. It's only just my... This is what I, I think. That's all. It's just my opinion. That's what I think. If you disagree, that's fine. That Whatever number you come up with... The final number of people that were saved were eight. All right, consider that. Eight souls were saved by water. In my opinion, 25 billion people were killed. And only eight out of 25 billion, only eight were saved. Consider this, all right, just consider it. When in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, I'm not sure that I'm going to find it with that. Oh, what, what am I doing wrong here? 10, right sake. I want to get that verse right there. 10. For ten, how about do? How about we do this? For can I just do this? Ten sake. There we go. All right. So in Genesis chapter eighteen, you know about this where Abraham is trying to uh, wheel and deal, <clears throat> compromise with God, 
and saying, hey, look, man, you're going to kill all these people? What if there are 50 righteous within the city? Won't you spare the city for their sake? And the Lord said, well, if I find 50, all right, okay, I'll spare the whole place for their sakes. And then Abraham got to thinking about it. Man, yeah, hey, I've been to that city. I know all about that city. I know what's going on there. And I'm not confident. I'm not really that confident. I'd like to think there's 50 righteous in that city. I'd like to think that. But if I'm honest with myself, I don't think there's 50. I'm not real confident in that. Well, let, let's, re, let's renegotiate, Lord. Now let's say there, there's not quite 50. Let, let's say there's only 40. Oh, no, he, okay, I'm sorry, I forget. I forgot about this. Okay, so he, he actually he drops it down to five. Well, what, what if we're just a little bit shy of 50? Peradventure there shall lack five of the 50 righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? No. And he said, if I find there 40 and five, I will not destroy it. Okay, well, all right. So if we're really close to 50, but we're not quite there, all right, okay. And then, of course, uh, <clears throat> Abraham's thinking, well, wait a second, man. That's, I'm still not real confident in that, man, you know? Not real con I'd like to think. I'd like to think that there's 50. I'd like to think there's 45, surely. You know? The heck? I'm not real confident in that. So maybe we can get that number down to 40. And so let's... Re let's uh. Let's sort of uh, negotiate again with the Lord here. Say, come on, Lord. I mean, all right, okay. All right. Let's say there's only 40. All right, so let's say I'm a little bit off here. Give me some grace here. Maybe there's maybe there's only 40. Let's say, I mean, if you're going to save it for 45, surely you'll, you'd save it if there's only 40. And the Lord says, okay. All right, I won't destroy it. I will not do it. I will not destroy the city for 46. If there's 40 people that are righteous, I'm, I'll, I'll spare the whole stinking city. And Abraham, he's probably feeling pretty good. Yeah, okay. All right, this is working out in my favor pretty good here. Except one thing, man. I, I know those people. And I know they're dirty. They're rotten. They're filthy. And they're stinky. And there's a whole lot of bad stuff happening in that place. And 40 people, man. If I more I think about this, I'm not real confident in 40. If I'm being honest with myself, I'm not real confident. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak peradventure. There should be 30 found there. All right, so let's get this number down to 30. Don't be angry, Lord. I just, yeah, I'm a little not as confident as I was in the beginning. I, I'm just, I'm thinking of these thirty people here. I'm thinking of them, and I'd hate for you to destroy that city when they're in there. I, I feel bad for those those thirty, you know. And if there's only thirty, surely you'll spare them, won't you? And the Lord says, okay, all right, I will not do it if I find 30. Boy, oh boy, boy, oh boy, boy, oh boy, yes, I mean, gee whiz, you know. I'm not sure what kind of a response I was expecting there, but that's the same response I got for 50. You know what I mean? It's like the Lord knows there ain't 30. It's almost like the Lord knows there ain't 30 righteous in there. It's almost like I know it too, really. I'm not real confident in that number. Really, I'm not, because the whole stinking place is filthy. These are nasty people. Now, surely there's some good people in that city. Surely. 
Maybe there's not 30. Let's let's whittle this down. Let's, let's get down a little little bit more. See if, see if the Lord will have some more leeway with me. I mean, I got them down from I got them from 50 to 30. Maybe we can get them down just a little bit more. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there should be found twenty. There shall be twenty found there. If there's only twenty and I'm off, just hear me out, Lord. Will you, will you not destroy it? And, and the Lord says, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. If there's twenty good people there, good folks there, I, I won't destroy it. Same thing same thing Jeez, Abraham's like wow man 20 people gee whiz come on Lord what if there's only 10 and he says oh let not the Lord be angry and I will speak yet but want this once this is my final uh, my final plea not not offer but my final plea my final plea let's say there's only 10 there's only 10 out of a, you know the, the city, which is probably uh, 25 million people. Probably a lot of people. And I think you got to consider Sodom, Gomorrah, and the cities all around about. Could have been 50 million. Could have been more. I have, I have no idea. If there's no way to prove on uh, either way. There's a lot of people. I'm sure of that. There is no doubt in my mind. All right, so... The Lord said, okay, I will not destroy it for ten's sake, right? And the Lord went his way as soon as he left communion with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place, and then you know what happened? There wasn't even ten righteous, man. There wasn't even ten righteous. Not even ten. So in the days of Noah, only eight were saved? Right, and so in the when Jesus comes at the end of the world, how many do you think will be saved? I mean, the question is being asked: Shall he find faith on the earth? There wasn't even ten righteous in those cities; only eight were saved in the days of Noah. Well, let's just imagine for a minute. For a minute here. There's only a handful of people saved right now. There's no way for us to know who's saved or not saved. But let's uh let's consider a couple of things here. Let's really <clears throat> tighten up the requirement to be saved. Just for the sake of, you know, playing along. Just hear me out on this. Alright, just hear me out on this. Um, Matthew chapter 6. I gotta, I gotta, just hold on, let me think here. You probably already know the verse, I'm sure. Matthew 7. Oh, way off. See, I'm, I need to spend more time reading the Bible, I think. Okay, so anyways... Uh, straight as narrow. That's what I say. Straight as in the narrow. Straight as the enter ye at the, see I butchered that something horrible. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life and few. There be that find it few. And it's interesting here, right after that, what's it say? Beware of false prophets. We're being warned over and over all throughout the Bible. It's amazing. It's incredible. Let's see if I can find a verse. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, the church that you go to, do they 
do they talk about this stuff? Because, I mean, it's incredible how we're finding this all over the place. Warning after warning after warning about evil men and seducers deceiving and being deceived. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many will come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. Does your church teach this? Oh, I, yeah, I forgot. Ah, that's the same. See? Maybe I need more coffee. huh? It's the same chapter. Ver and Matthew 7, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Uh, beware of false prophets. I mean, we're warned and warned and warned. And it says here, straight as the gate narrows the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. So the way to the gates of heaven, if you will, everlasting life is very, very narrow. So begs the question, what must I do to be saved? Right? And that very question is asked. That very question is asked. What must I do to be saved? That's in the Bible. You know that? Acts chapter 16, verse 30. What must I do to be saved? saved and you the answer is believe on the lord jesus christ all right compare this what what we're reading here in matthew 7 for example have we not prophesied and we did all this good stuff and we're good people and none of that is included and that the the response is simple believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, these people, they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They believe that they're a good person and they've earned their way to heaven. That's what they think. That's what this whole world thinks. That's what I contend. That's what I think people, they go to church to be a good person. They think, well, if I go to church and I'm a good person, I'll be saved. That's what I think, and that, and what makes it even worse is the churches are teaching that. They are. you got to go to church. Well, you, if you don't go to church, you're going to hell, right? You're a bad person if you don't go to church. If you don't go to church and give the pastor your money, you're going to hell. That's, uh, that's, what they, that's the attitude that they bring. All right. So, I forget what I was going to say here. Where was I going to go next? Believe on the Lord Jesus. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, I fear by lest any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity of, that is in Christ. See, we are 100% at the mercy of God. 100%. Not 99%. 100%. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. Go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. And God's very adamant about this. You're not going to save yourself at all. You can't. You can't save yourself at all. There's nothing you can do that will be good enough to save yourself. You know, you think about um, how powerful God is. You, he's, not a, he's not a weakling. Uh, God is in control. You're not in control. Are you kidding me? You think you're in control? You think you got this world by the, you know what? By the bull's horn? And you're in charge? And you're in control? You think you can 
set your own path and walk your own path? No. You're in for a shocker, buddy. You're not in control. You don't have any say. That's not up to you at all. It's not up to you at all. The only thing you can do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only thing you can do. But even at that, uh, what makes you think, uh, you think God's going to say, well, I got no, I, I have no power over this guy. He believes. I got no power. Got no power. You believe in one God? Thou do as well. Okay. Thou believest in one God? You thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Well, the devils won't get saved, you know that. The devils being spirits absent of God. I mean, God is in control. God is the one who created this place. God is the one that created the heavens above, the earth below. He's the one that created all the creatures. All the animals, even human life. You would not even breathe if it were not for God. God is in control. And you think you can do something contrary to God to save yourself? No. You're absolutely 100% at the mercy of God. Knowing that then... Take a look at all these people today. They think that they are a good person. They're not. And even if they were, that wouldn't be good enough. You know what I mean? It's still not good enough. There's only one who is good enough, and that is Jesus. He's the only one and he is God manifest in the flesh. He came into our body, into our, temper, our temple. And he has done all the works necessary for eternal life. He has laid down his life and took it back up and ascended to heaven. He is leading the way. And we that are saved will follow him. All right, so... Now consider this. Let's let's start narrowing it down. All right. So, um, in a vague sort of way, I've eliminated everybody that goes to church. Everybody that goes to church thinks they're going to church to be a good person. All right. Now let's l eliminate it even more. Just imagine. Go. Just follow me on this. I know you're not going to like that one. I know you're not going to like that one, but think about this. Give me a second here. I got a... Oh, yeah. Alright, so I'm changing... Um, the, um, adding a new requirement okay and the requirement is to be saved you have to believe in the Bible that you hold in your hands all right so let think about this how many people do you know that do not believe the Bible that they hold in their hands well for me personally, it, it almost every I I don't know anybody. One person, I think. Maybe two people. Two people. And I've known a lot of people. I know a lot of people. And. 
maybe two people that I've that I know personally that I might run into at the store or whatever maybe two out of thousands of thousands of people 10,000 people maybe two maybe All right. And so, what is the biblical basis for this? Well, well consider uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 21, and the law. And now look, you don't believe, if you don't believe what this says, you're one of them. You're one of them that are on the outside. All right? I mean, I'm. that's, uh, uh, to me, it's insanity. It's insanity to refute this. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 21. It's insanity. All right, so we go to Isaiah 28, verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people and then... 1 Corinthians 14, verse 21. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. So, what this means is, the word of God transcends all languages for all time, forever and ever. The proof is in the pudding. Yet, for all that, for every the, the miracle of that, if you will. The astonishing miracle of the Word of God being in our own language. People still won't hear it. You think about all these people that do not believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. It, every single one of them. Anytime somebody points to the Greek or the Hebrew, eliminate them. They are not of God. They are not of us. They are not one of us that are saved. If you believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, why would you point to a foreign language? Why? You're saying that you don't have the Word of God in your hands? I'm talking about the Word of God above. If God is above then the Word of God comes from God above. Why, why in the hell would you point to Greek or Hebrew? With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak. Will I speak unto this people? And yet for all that, just consider, hey, you want to argue, you don't like it, you're, then you're on the outside. You're on the outside, Jack. Acts chapter 2. How hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Wow. Wait a second. How'd this happen? Huh? The one time deal? I mean, you're going to have to really squirm and wiggle to try to. Justify this not being true. How hear we, every man, in our own tongue, wherein we were born? All right, because, you, I mean, if you if you don't want to believe it and you want to try to twist it and all this sort of stuff, that's on you, Jack. That's fine. You do you fool yourself is all you're going to do. You ain't fooling me. All you're doing is fooling yourself. We have the Word of God in the English language. The Word of God transcends all languages for all time, forever and ever. And ever and ever. Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even to the sunder of soul and spirit. This is not just words on a piece of paper and of the joints of marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Wow. 
Now you're saying, well, you gotta go to the Greek and the Hebrew. You gotta, it's like an old Harry Potter book. You gotta try to understand. You gotta try to get in the mind of the author that was dead for thousands of years. And so now, now that gives you the freedom to make up whatever you want the Bible to say, doesn't it? You can turn a dog into a cat and pretend to be smarter than God. Can't you? I mean, that's the whole reason. The, the, the only reason people go to the Greek and the Hebrew is so they can twist the Word of God to say what they want it to say. That's the only reason. You know, you've heard me talk about uh, the only reason people preach this idea of a bonus thousand years is because they have the sexual fantasy. That's the only reason. Well, the only reason people point to the Greek and the Hebrew is so they can change the Word of God. There is no other reason. There, there is no other reason. There's no other, absolutely no other reason. There's no motive other than to change the Word of God. That's the only reason. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, For we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God. You think about that. In other words, there are more people corrupting the Word of God than there are people staying true to the Word of God. You know, think about this. If there was a, if he had a book that I wrote called The Word of Jimmy, and you had that book in your hands, where would that book come from? It would come from Jimmy, wouldn't it? You got The Word of Jimmy. Where's the word of Jimmy come from? It comes from Jimmy. Where's the word of God come from? The word of God comes from God above. These people, I'm telling you, these people that say the word of God comes from the Hebrew and the Greek, they are they're filthy. They're just like those Sodomites. In the Gomorrah Knights, or whatever you call them. People, the filthy, stinky people from Sodom and Gomorrah. They don't believe in the God at all. They are defilers of their own flesh. They are putrid. They are filthy. But those are the people with all the power. Those are the people that are running the shows all throughout the world. They're in control, aren't they? It's not the innocent, the righteous, that are in charge. No, it's the sneaky deceivers, the manipulators, the liars who are in charge. They're the ones that obtain power by any means necessary. All right, so we live in this world of filth without a doubt. All right, so just consider this, man. Just consider this. Anybody... That points to a foreign language does not believe in God. They're not saved. They're not one of us. It's not the word of Hebrew. It's not the word of Greek. It's the word of God. The word of God transcends all languages for all time, forever and ever. So if you don't believe, if you don't believe, in the Bible that you hold in your hands? I mean, how in the world do you say you believe in God? Well, you believe in a God that is not able to give us his word in your language? Oh, no, God can't speak English. He only speak Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic. Man, you know that when I was in high school, I took German class. And I got 9%. 9%. I think that's a record that stands even today. I bet you I could call them right now and I would ask them, who's got the record for the lowest grade of any class in the history of this high school? And then they would look at the bottom of the list and they would see me. Well, it looks like uh, Mr. Henning back in 1987 got 9% in German class. That's the record. I, and my last name is Henning. 
I took German class. I didn't understand a guten tag and bacon. Didn't understand none of it, man. What in the world? Now you're telling me. I didn't think about that. German's a, a current language. People speak German today. I don't know how, but they do. Now you're telling me I got to learn some goofier language from a lot long, from a long, long time ago that nobody's born into. And not just one goofy language. I got to learn two, maybe even three goofy languages. I got no chance. I might as well not even believe in God. If that were true, I wouldn't even pff, screw that. I'm having a hard enough time learning English. It's the only language I know. I struggle with these words. Parthians and the Medes and the Lemanites and the Dwellers and the Mesopotamians. I can't. I'm having troubles with English. Now nah, you telling me I gotta go? No way. It ain't happening. But glory. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We don't have to learn three different foreign languages. Who know? Maybe more. I mean, maybe once you learn those, they'll start moving the goalpost. I spent 50 years learning three languages, and then they say, oh, well, hey, we just discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's another language you have to learn. Oh, wait, who's, just, who's determining this stuff? Who's making up these rules? You telling me I can't believe the Bible that I hold in my hands? You telling me that God can't speak English? I mean, just be honest and say it. Well, God can't speak English. I mean, these people, they don't believe in God at all. All right, and then so, because they do not believe, because they do not believe, they're all delusional, every single one of them. Consider Isaiah 66. And this is interesting because this is the last book of Isaiah, and we see prophecy, many prophecies throughout the book of Isaiah about the end of this world. Lots of prophecies. It's an amazing book. And, of course, I'm going to recommend you read it and 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 read it. Read it over and over and over. It, it Just for the sake of, uh, you know, clearing your conscience, if you will, or removing any doubt, because a lot of what we read in Isaiah is um, how do I say this is um, what we read in Isaiah is supported in the New Testament is revealed and supported in the New Testament in other words we can connect the dots with a whole bunch of stuff a whole bunch of stuff from in Isaiah to the New Testament the New Testament of course reveals and makes it easier to know the things that we read in in Isaiah and other places as well, but um, you know, just I guess for me, I just felt the need to just read it over and over and over and over and over and over several times, just to uh, clear my conscience or to you know relieve any doubt about what it might say. It's just yeah, that's just me, I guess. But anyways, who cares? I also will choose. Their delusions. Verse 4, I will also will choose their delusions and bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Now consider this. I think sometimes people don't actually consider word for word what these passages say. Because when I called, can you give an example of that in today's world? If you can't, then you're probably not saved. All right. So when it says, when I spake, can you give an example of that in today's world? If you can't, then you're probably not saved. <laughs> I mean, it's it's rather obvious. 
because if you if you read this when I spake and you think right now in today's world oh well there ain't no there ain't no examples to give of that and then the very next thing that it says they did not hear that's talking about you and you're too blind to see it when I spake they did not hear. I mean, it's amazing. It's a phenomenon, in my opinion. Um, it's it's great. It's wonderful at the same time, right? The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. When I spake, they did not hear. God is speaking. You just heard it. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. See, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. See, this is not just words on a piece of paper translated from a foreign language that nobody's born into for over thousands of years ago. Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. The word of God transcends all languages for all time, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And so, right here, this is the words of God. This is speaking to you right now, right now, and you don't hear it? All right, so you're going to change your tune, aren't you? If you said before, well, there is no examples today that God speaks. Now you got to change your tune, don't you? Now you got to say, well, yeah, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, right now, people... They're not hearing, and they're not answering the Word of God. And because they do not believe the Bible that they hold in their hands, they are delusional. And so that's why we see all these people preaching strange doctrines. All right, and, and I'll contend anybody that preaches premillennialism and postmillennialism and all millennialism and uh, nunca millennialism and um well, what do you got what other doctrines do you got these these people that uh, you know once saved always saved and is is it true is it not true uh maybe they're not even saved whether they're for or against you, you ever considered that why are you preaching these doctrines and you know the millennial reign why would you preach that what if all of them are deceivers now of course jesus does preach eternal life whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die so there shouldn't that right there the answer is the question shouldn't be any more discussion upon it should there Now, of course, I agree with one saved, always saved. And that's eternal life. And I don't understand why there would even be a dispute. You know, why, why, why would debate it? You know, if you don't believe it, you're not saved. Period. So, that, you know, that's another example. I mean, you eliminate all the, the people that are against once saved always saved you re you remove all the people that do not believe the bible that they hold in their hands and then then you remove all these people that are teaching these uh str strange doctrines uh preterism futurism premillennialism postmillennialism all right so consider this here where am i at all these uh, 
all these uh oh I'm thinking I got two thoughts in my head. Hold on a second. All these people teaching these these strange doctrines. Doctrines of devils, right? No. Oh. I didn't realize it was that many. Oh. Am I, am I crazy? Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. All right, so if that's true, then can you give an example of a people that are giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils? If you can't, then you're not saved. Right. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. You know anybody forbidding to marry? Well, a whole bunch of people are. <laughs> it's ridiculous, bad, ridiculous. Okay, and commanding to abstain from meats. You know, these uh, vegetarians. Oh, well, if you eat bacon, blah 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 blah, you're going to hell. Well, bacon's bad for you. Yeah, you know, scientifically, the scientists proved it. Oh, they did. What? What did they do? Write an article yeah, that proved it. Yeah. Okay. And God has created. Well, I'm sorry. Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Uh, if you didn't know that, then you don't know the truth, and you're not saved. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. Nothing. Nothing means nothing. If you don't know that, then you don't know nothing. You're not saved. If it be received with thanksgiving. Nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. All right, come on. All right, so all these people that, all of them, that say you can't eat bacon, they're all unsaved devils. Every single one of them. They're not saved. There's not a whole bunch of people out there being saved. There's not a coming revival where people are all of a sudden going to start believing. Not a group of people that are going to come along and dance in the streets and say, Hey, glory to God, we're all saved. I mean, that could happen, but they're not all saved. The closer and closer we get to the end, the fewer and fewer there are gonna people there are gonna be that are saved. Except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. There's no way around this. The closer we get to the end, the fewer people there will be saved. To to if God allowed things to continue the way they are, there would come a point to where Nobody would be saved. But God's going to cut it off just before that point comes. And the days of Noah is a great example of that. Where he saved eight people out of millions. Billions. Billions of people. Billions. I think 25 billion people. And I, I'm not going to get into that. But I've shown evidence for it. It could have been a whole lot more. I mean, could have been beyond trillions, quadrillions, could have been. And I don't think people understand that. There was a bunch of people alive, no question about it. Anyways, only eight of them were saved. So here we've got another warning of the latter times, the last days. All right, Second Peter chapter 3, knowing this first, that there should come in the last days scoffers, Walking after their own lust. Again, warning after warning all throughout the Bible. Now, when you go to church on Sunday, are they teaching you this stuff? Now, hey, this world's coming to an end. It's going to be quick. It's going to be quick. Wait, doesn't Jesus say something like, Behold, 
something to the effect of I come pretty quick. I'm going to be coming kind of. Oh, right there. Behold, I come quickly. Now, when he says, behold, I come quickly, he means it. And I believe it. Behold, I come quickly. Revelation 22. And behold, I come quickly. Yeah, he repeats it in case you missed it the first time, right? And he's coming quick. I mean, he's coming real quick. And you're sitting back on your lazy boy thinking, oh, the Lord is slack concerning his coming. He's taking his time. And uh, it's going to be a while. And uh, it's been a while already. It's been a long time already. And God's just taking his time and all this and that. And, and uh, so when, you know, either even to the point where people will say, well, yeah, that, that's what the Bible says, but he already came. I, I mean, if you remember, he came before it was even written. That's how fast he came. So this is, this don't mean nothing. You don't even, don't believe that because it already happened. It already happened. The end of the world already came and blah, 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 blah. The resurrection has passed already. Blah, 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 blah. This is all in the past here. This is, you know, just you're reading scraps out of the, garbage can and this, none of this means anything and it's weird it's just weird and it's evidence that these people are not saved at all because you're saying well jesus came on you know he came man it was manifest in the flesh and then um he did all the works of god and then, then he died and then he rose back to life and he preached on the world and ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return and then the, you're saying that before the ink even dried, that he went up to heaven and then came back? Well, there's no point in even writing it down, if that was the case. I mean, if the, all these people that preserved the Word of God and that worshipped it and sanctified it and, and, and held it in with a high regard... For all these years, if they believed what you believed, they would... I mean, this is stupid, man. They wouldn't even care about what it says. Oh, this already happened. No, this is in the latter times that these people, these devils, are teaching this stuff. Oh, it's already passed. And we're being warned. We are warned directly about these people who are making these wild claims that these things have happened already right I mean specifically yeah, I mean if you can't apply this to something that's going on right now then you're probably not saved right there you go thanks I kind of almost appreciate that autocorrect right there all right second Peter second um Timothy, I think that says, verse 18, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Of course, we see that happening today in great multitudes, right? Like a lot of people think that they're smarter than everybody else, saying, oh, this already happened. The resurrection, yeah, Jesus said, oh, I, I, come, I come quickly. And he already came. The resurrection passed already. And, boy, these people are just dumber than dog do. It's unimaginable that somebody could have that low of an IQ. It really is. But a whole bunch of people out there. And the whole reason is, is because they do not believe. They do not believe, and because they do not believe, and because they do not believe, Again, because they do not believe, God will choose their delusions. Just like the Bible says. The Bible's got it all covered. The Word of God has every single thing covered. Everything. Everything you can imagine, it's in the Bible. Now, if you, if you don't have eyes to see it, that's on you. But it's there. Every single thing is there. 
All right, every single thing. And consider this, man. I mean, if you can't put the pieces of the, if you can't connect the dot here, then that's revealing of your own heart. Consider that right there. As some men count slackness. You know, oh, look, God's taking a long time here. God's slacking his, you know, return. You know, he's taking forever, man. And I know, I get it. I get it. I get it. I had numerous conversations with my grandmother about why is God taking so long? And this world is just full of evil. Well, and it, <laughs> it, to, to me, it's interesting. You go back to, what was it, Genesis 18? Remember the, the conversation, right? Abraham, he felt sorry for those few that were saved. So he, he pleaded with God, don't, don't come yet. Don't destroy the world yet. Right? For ten sake. This spirit, let things continue for those sake. So if you draw a parallel, right, with what what the situation that we're in now? I mean God could come right now. But for ten sake that he's he's gonna spare or he's going to wait just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. And my hope, it should be your hope, that hey, maybe one more person will get saved. Maybe one more person somewhere in the world will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, be born of the Spirit of God. Maybe just one. And... It, maybe it won't happen today. Maybe it'll be a couple of days. You know, maybe uh, like on the weekend or something. One more person is saved. And so then we can, be, we can all be thankful that God did wait just a little bit longer before he come. For that one person. You know, if you think, if you think of... Uh, the world in terms of right now there's only at most a dozen people saved in the entire world but uh, it's possible that one more person there's just one more person that could get saved maybe not today but in a few days you know it's gonna happen if hopefully uh, that's what I'm hoping that the one person might get saved here in a few days they just need a little bit of time to think, I guess, you know. One, you know. A little more time to realize this stuff is true, man. And I can't do it on my own. I'm not going to make it. I'm 100% at the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not in control at all. And if you realize that, you humble yourself before God. God has promised that He will save you. It's just, you know, we live in a crazy world. I mean, if you're waiting for the person next to you to get saved, you're writing, you're depending on them, aren't you? You're not depending on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're depending on that other person. And you'll never get saved because that other person will never save you. You can't save yourself. He can't save you. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can save you. That's it. And so hopefully in a few days here we'll get another person saved. And, you know, I mean, let's say we've been waiting for weeks now for that one person to get saved. Let's say for the last seven weeks, there nobody's been saved. Nobody in the world has been getting saved. Not one single person. So now we're going on week eight. And we're all hoping, we, you know, the what, 10 or 11 of us that are, that are saved right now. 
We're all hoping for that one more person to get saved. And then, okay, and then it's going to be okay. Then it's going to be okay for the Lord to come. Yeah, I mean, really? What are you thinking? All, all these people that are going to church are saved? Why? Why would you think that? None of them believe the Bible. Not a single one of them. They all point to the Greek and the Hebrew. All right, and then you could even whittle it down even further. Do they even believe in eternal security? I mean, if you don't believe in eternal security, you're not saved. You're not even close to being saved. And you shouldn't even really waste your time, in my opinion, just having a discussion with people that refute once saved, always saved. It's a waste of time. They're not saved. They don't care about salvation at all. They completely disregard the Word of God, the Spirit of life. They don't have any desire for any of it. And so begs the question, are you arguing, debating, discussing with people, once saved, always saved? Yeah, that's great, man, that's great. But why? Why are you doing that? Is it because you're saved and you want them to be saved? Is that really why? Or are you doing it to argue? Are you doing it just for the sake of doing it? You see one view... You're going to take the other view. And it's a fascinating argument. You can argue and argue and oppose each other all day long. Is that what it's about? The opposition? The competition? Huh? So, you know, maybe it's... Maybe you're arguing for once saved, always saved, right? But maybe... Your priorities are all wrong. Your reasoning is all wrong. Right? Maybe. Maybe even you see all these people arguing and arguing all the day long. Right? Once saved, always saved. Once saved, always saved. You know, usually you see question marks. Heck is that? What what is this here? Anyways, love this girl right here, grace in your face. Now what if you're arguing right there? Once saved, always saved is a satanic doctrine. Okay, you see this and you say, Oh I'm gonna argue against this guy. You know, I'm gonna come I'm gonna come out to look smarter than this guy. And I'm gonna get a whole bunch of people to take my side. Because I don't like this guy here. So I'm going to argue. Whatever he says, I'm going to argue against it. And then I'm going to use this gal right here to make my points. Because she makes good points. She seems like she's real smart. So I'm going to use her points to argue against this guy that I hate. And I'm going to make it seem like I'm on her side and against this guy. Alright, so does that, does that make that person saved? Think about it. Just because somebody says all the right things doesn't mean their heart's in the right place. All right. I don't know what game this is, but that looks fun. Right. That looks like a lot of fun killing people. You know, doesn't it? What? Well, <laughs> uh you know what, this guy better, he'd be better off just sticking to the video game. Honestly. That, to me, this game looks familiar. I don't know if you can hear the train, but the train's coming, boys. The, the, the train is coming, boys. And I'll tell you who else is coming. All right, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. All right, it could very well be today. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it. God's going to wait a few more days just for one more person. It could be today. It could be. But maybe it, maybe it is just like three or four more days. Either way, man, keep it in mind. It, you, th Hey, maybe you're not saved. Are you saved? 
think about that. I know you want to, oh, I'm saved. I'm high and mighty. I, I want to use the Lord's power to save other people. Well, you can't do it, Jack. You can't save nobody. You can't even save yourself. So just think about that. Are you even saved? Right? Are you even saved? And don't assume anybody else is saved. Maybe it's me that's saved in this world, and it's you that's saved. Maybe me and you are the only two people. And so what can we do? Nothing, really. All we can do is preach the gospel. We can plant the seeds of truth and let people know that, hey, we have somebody that will save us from this wicked world. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Only one requirement, and that is you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe that you need a Savior because you do. You can't save yourself. The good news is God has done all the works necessary for eternal life. It's real simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.